Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works. We are continuing from a choice. Do I want to? I apologize for those sounds, I will cut those out. It's one problem with this ultimate mod, it still has a bit of weird audio foibles, but uh, can't just lay here and do nothing, I. So, I mean obviously, this is Tosaka's route, so we gotta go Tosaka up as much as possible. So that I... Plus, as we learned, uh, she might have a strategy. Now, it's a strategy she'll be real embarrassed by, but I think I know what it is. A plan against Gilgamesh. If we are to fight that cold-hearted enemy, we'll have to come up with some plan. Someone will die if we head to the Ryudo Temple as we are now. Compared to that, thinking about the very last minute is nothing. Oh boy. She's gonna take us... Uh-oh. I knock on her door. Uh oh. Mm. I thought Tosaka would be sleeping, but I guess she's still awake. More importantly, she's in a panic. After a few minutes of rustling sounds, she must have calmed down. After taking a breath, I can hear her even outside. Tosaka opens the door. Tosaka glares at me as soon as she sees me. Wait. Why are you glaring at me? I asked the obvious. Of course. That's the obvious response she's gonna give, but I, I, I have to ask. But... She gives a strange response. This is like someone trying to give the birds and the bees and not really wanting to, uh, not, yeah, not really wanting to. Oh, Tosaka pulls me inside, locks the door, and walks to the black back of the room. I move to the center of the room for now. I sit down on the cushion and face Tosaka, who is sitting on a chair. And an awkward silence follows. Tosaka is silent, even though she's the one with the plan. Tosaka, Gilgamesh no koto nanda ka? Wakatte ru wa yo. Saber to tatakawase taku nai itte yun desho. Saber ni wa yasashi no yo ne, Hemiya kun. あ、そうな。そういう話じゃないだろう。単にセイバーじゃあいつとは相性が悪いから配置替えをするべきだって話だ。足止め役のセイバーが倒されたら次に狙われるのは父さかなんだから。じゃあ配置替えって言うけどど
それは敵として脅威を感じたからでしょうねあいつは英霊エミアに対してだけは互角の戦いをせざるを得ないんだから That's true, but... そうかもしれないけど無理があるアーチャーの剣を一本投影するだけでボロが出るんだぞあんな次から次にホグを出されたら投影も間に合わないし魔力も持たない If only there was some way to transfer magical energy. あなたの魔術が今までと同じならね。Oh. けど、アーチャーのホグが何だったか覚えてるでしょあの魔術、固有結界さえ使いこなせるようになれば、ギルガメッシュに対抗できる。トサカスターズアミ。But I can't live up to our expectation. ウチャだ。固有結界ってのは、近所中の近所じゃないか。やり方がわからないし。アーチャーが世界を作るときに使った魔力は俺の数倍だぞ。If only there was some way to fill up your magical energy! ええ、無理なのは分かってる。けど、やり方ならあなたはもう知ってるはずよ。だって、あなたの魔術は結局みんなそれなんだもの。強化も投影も、あなたの固有結界から漏れたものに過ぎない。必要な魔力さえあれば、驚くぐらい簡単に歯車が噛み合うと思う。仮にそうだとしても無理なことに変わりはないだろう。俺には結界を張る魔力も維持する魔力もないんだ。あいつは長い年月をかけて魔術回路を鍛えていったんだろうけど、俺にはあいつほどの魔力が。分かってる。でもギルガメッシュも言ってたでしょ。自分で補えないなら、よそから持ってくるのが魔術師だって。だから。俺にはそんなよそから魔力をもらってくるなんて器用な真似はできないんだって。トウサカみたいに宝石に魔力を貯めているわけでもないし。Boy, it's, it's really apparent he doesn't know about that info in this route. もしかしてあの宝石を使おうっていうのか ?I don't have a magical element, so I don't think I'd be able to do that. それで済むならとっくに渡してるわ。けど。私の宝石は私にしか変換できないから却下。でも、アプローチとしてはそれしかない。That one. 他人の魔力を自分のものとして扱うのにはいろいろと手順があって、現状でできることと言ったら、もうそれぐらいしかないわけだし。That one. なあ、父さか。どんな考えかぐらい教えてくれないか。これじゃ相談にもならない。え、うん。そんなこと、シロに言えるわけないじゃない。Oh, she's embarrassed. I'm super right. Seems she thought of something she can't tell me about. ん、何でもないの。方法はいくつか考えられるんだけど、その中で可能性の低いものを、主者選択していただけで。そうなのか。それで、いい考えがあるのか。うん。率直に言うと、私とあなたの問題。Oh, it's the talk. Oh, boy. Oh, it's happening. 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 Oh, it's h a p 私の魔力が多少減っても戦力は拮抗するわ。If I can restrain Gilgamesh with my reality marble, as long as there are no other masters or servants left, the Holy Grail will be wide open. With a Magus like Tosaka as well as Saber, our chances of success might be pretty high. しかしだな。その前の段階が難しいというか、<笑>俺はパスの通し方なんてわからない。I do. そんなの承知の上でよ。その方法を考えるのが私の役目なんだし。Tosaka falls deep into thought for some reason. She doesn't look very happy. パスの通し方だけど、速攻性があって、魔力の融通が可能となると、方法は数えるほどしかない。一番有効なのは、魔術回路をお互いに移植すること。Transplant magic circuits? Magic circuits are like a second nervous system and could be called the Magus itself. Magus is a mechanism that uses odd to operate mana. Say the time comes when the future descendant attains mysteries. In order for them to have the basic ability to use that theory, this living inheritance is added over to the generations. 
You could say it's like blood and bone that strengthens through aculum aculumation. That's a word. So, Oh, we're using the word essence now, are we? Okay. Her brief explanation contains some guilt as well. That's natural. If we do something as drastic as transplanting magic circuits, there's no knowing what might happen. A person who gives up their magic circuit is giving up their status as a magus. But if this will settle things, then I won't hesitate. Yes. <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't realize the gravity of that sentence. Oh. Just like that. I had prepared myself and she quickly rejected my suggestion. Oh, we're gonna go the other way. Oh no. Oh no, we're gonna go the other way. I see. I'm the one who will be using the reality marble to give shape to the immense illusion that erodes away the world. I need to completely open my magic circuits. Transplanting those circuits to Sosaka would make a path, and consequently, not having enough paths to perform magic would be putting the cart before the horse. I'm also like super brand new to this whole thing, so please bear with me. But that's... Yeah. Okay, well, I guess we can't do this then. So... So, what is our plan of action then? Because I can't give you mine, you can't give me yours. Unless. No. There is no real third party in this. I mean, because Saber, we can't. I'm pretty sure. Don't work the other. I have no idea. Are we gonna like jury rig, jerry rig, uh, set up for this? Like, are we gonna do not a series of circuits, but parallel circuits? Oh, let me break out the blueprint paper for that then. Like, imagining like source and loads? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, that's another idea. Okay. Hmm. A magic crest. A bloodline's history in which all its secrets and mysteries are written. Yeah, to say that this is a big deal that we're transferring over is putting it lightly because there's a lot to this that... Like, this is, this is not just your status. It's your... your history. If magic circuits are blood and bone, then the magic crest would be the flesh. A magic crest is magic given form. The proof of a single Magus's existence as the family's head spends a lifetime gaining a giving intangible magic a form. As the inheritor of a magic crest, Tosaka can use the magic given shape by the family's past heads. Yeah, that's, that's big. Oh. Is there any downside to giving it away? Could we give it back after? Yeah, guess we gotta be a Tosaka now. 
刻印化している魔術はまあ使い物にならなくなるけど受信装置としての役割ぐらいになら作り変えられるわよ。Oh, well, that's not good for it. ああ、それとも成功率の話一族じゃない人間に魔術刻印を移植できるかってことああ、それも一応気になるけど。大丈夫、任せなさい。きっかりシロをバックアップして、セイバーと3人で勝ち残って、聖杯を手に入れるから。え。もう決めたことだもの。ここ一番の失敗も、今回ばかりはねじ伏せてやるわ。You better not, my body's on the line this time. She asserts it brightly with a beaming smile. With that, I knew it was wrong of me to be worried. Because she's removing her magic crest. With her own hands, she'll erase her bloodline's greatest desire. That fact, Tosaka easily laughs at it without showing a hint of regret. And I've seen that strength many times now. なによ、急に物分かりいい顔して。私の顔なんか変？ね、ああ、そうだな。初めて教会に行った時と同じだ。なんていうか、父さんのいいところって分かりづらいよな。失礼な言い草ね。それで思い出したけど、あの時私って変
It's not like she didn't hear me. Tosaka furrows her brow in a strangely awkward expression. <laughs> you can't surprise me, he says. That's what it means to trust her. Tosaka nods in assent and then... Oh boy. In a strained voice, she gives an unfamiliar order. Time to confirm the situation. The room's lights are off. Tosaka is sitting on the bed with her face down, strangely nervous. Though it's a bit late to confirm this. I think Tosaka's soft-looking body and extremely su supple legs are sensational. <laughs> and she ordered me to take off my clothes. Hmm. Okay, okay. I, hmm. She yells at me. I see, I think, withdrawing my strange expectation. I don't think that leaves much room for weird ideas or misunderstandings. <laughs> Oh no. なるほど。なるほど indeed. That's right. I don't know what a magic crest transplant is all about, but transplant probably means something like a medicinal transplant, so we'd need to expose our skin. Yeah, come on, it's fine. In the other path, that is not the case. The scary part is that she probably would. I take off my shirt. She's given me treatment several times, but I'm still kind of embarrassed. I hear a deep breath in the dim light. Probably Tosaka's. Maybe Sabre's. Potentially Sakura's. She doesn't answer. Her silence must be an affirmative answer. I turn around and fall silent. <sighs> well, I'm turning around, I take a deep breath to keep myself calm. I'm going to take over Tosaka's magic rest and make a path between us. I'll borrow Tosaka's magical energy in order to re evoke the reality marble to defeat that servant. So this is just part of the process of that long and arduous battle. As long as I understand that, I should be able to shut out any unnecessary worldly thoughts. I'm really scared to click. Please don't be something I gotta censor. My heart skips a beat. I slowly turn around. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> then, I know it's rude, but I unintentionally knit my brows. Tosaka took off her clothes, but it doesn't feel like she put any effort into it. <laughs>なによ不満だっていうの不満というより、バランスが悪いというか、だいたいこっちは上着を全部取ってるのに、トウサカはそれだけだと比率が合わないし、どうも新メトリーじゃないのは落ち着かない。Oh, you are begging. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, probably for the best that I don't inquire as to what she's talking about. Tosaka mutters to herself. Thankfully, I've gotten my hands full keeping calm, so I can't argue with Tosaka. 
Okay, but do we have to turn around for you taking off a legging? Because, like, that's... that's whatever. I turn around and she mumbles. This time, the rustling of Tosaka's clothes goes on longer. Oh no, I'm scared to click again. One more time, I command my heart to remember that this is a serious ritual. Even if Tosaka is dressed immodestly, everything will be ruined if I let my mind race. Tosaka's voice is trembling. I take a long look at her. And there we go. She put the legging back on! The light of the lamp softly illuminates her body. Her thin shoulders and neck, the lines of her collarbone are beautifully drawn. That is a weird, again, what, I don't get collarbone people. I'm relieved that Tosaka is still belligerent while she's still so beautiful. My face relaxes and I may be smiling without meaning to. I hide my face with my hand and take a deep breath. My face is probably red, so I'll seem nervous until I hide it. Tosaka beckons me from atop the bed. We sit across from one another. The bed bounces slightly under our weight. That's suggestive. Neither of us speak a word and we take another deep breath. The ritual to transfer Tosaka's magic crest is about to begin. We move closer, and I stiffen my restless body. I clear my head and concentrate. She extends her left arm where the magic crest is. Her arm is exposed and the pattern on her upper arm emerges faintly as it fills with magical energy. That's what training my magic circuits was always meant to be. Forcing a foreign second nerve into me and controlling it, though I'm not sure if a magic crest is the same sort of thing. Tosaka lets out a laugh, as if remembering my absurd training method has made her ease up. She is smaller than I thought. We are larger than I thought. However, she suddenly narrows her eyes and glares at me. <laughs> like, like, for what's your level of weirdness you're okay with? She ignores me. She draws close to me, our shoulders almost colliding. It's like I'm hugging Tosaka's left hand to my chest. Tosaka's breath is on the nape of my neck. Not just a deep breath, but... Okay. Those are words. My breathing trembles as she says her spell. I can feel the magical energy coursing through Tosaka's body through her hand. Her slender fingers are upon my chest, my heartbeat and Tosaka's pulse. I close my eyes and try to deepen my concentration. The pulses and waves overlap. Tosaka is the one uniting them and I maintain the rhythm. I unify my mind and keep my mind clear like I do when I train. That's all I can do, since I have no experience in sympathizing, especially with a woman. My eyes are shut so tightly, it's as if they're shown sewn shut. My sense of smell dulls and my tongue tastes nothing. My body senses are going out of whack. I can't tell if I'm sitting or standing. On the other hand, Tosaka's touch feels hot. I can't differentiate my own pulse from Tosaka's waves. I hallucinate something gripping my heart. I imagine myself gripping someone's heart. I grope around with my fingers to check the feeling of the palm being transferred to me. Uh oh. My ears still- but bud, I think you grabbed something else. My ears still work and I hear that voice. 
No, my body is so unclear that I can't tell if it was my body or if what I heard was Tosaka's voice. I think you're groping something else. That breathing sounds like someone is in pain. I know it's not my own breathing I'm hearing, so I listen carefully. I get scolded from inside myself. I try to ask what this means, what's happening. Okay, I see. Ooh, shared senses is a terrifying like, concept. That's all I hear before I'm suddenly losing sight of myself. It feels like my body is turned into paper that is being folded up. It's being slowly, carefully put away. But time has stopped in the outside world, so from the outside it must look like it's happening at the speed of light. There's no end to stowing and reduction. Any flat object should have a limit to how many times it can be folded, no matter how wide its surface area, but my body is being shut up deeper and deeper. My field of vision is turning blue. The world before I was folded up is red. I'm floating. I'm falling but floating, and the world is passing by me at high speed. When I try to reach out my hand to get used to this fast yet frozen world. Ah. I realized that my arms were already folded up. That's worrying. I get rid of the excess things and the things I don't need, but it's a problem if I don't have any limbs. I can't recognize myself. So the first thing I should do isn't to affirm the world, but to, hypo to hypothesize my own form. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're in the groping realm. There's fish here. I clench both my hands. Even if one hypoth even if only hypothetically I recognize my own self. There's no top or bottom, no sky or earth. I'm floating in a blue celestial sphere. It's peaceful, not in terms of sound, but rather the entire shape is peaceful and complete. Time is passing outside. Yo, is this uh, the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 3? The outside is entirely filled by this blue sea. There's nothing inside this celestial sphere. In other words, from the perspective of the blue sea, the sphere itself is the sky. A world egg. Oh, berserk! Has this sphere been covered with a shell? Or have the exterior and interior been reversed? Is this everything born from nothing or nothing forced out of everything? Inverted, the celestial sphere continues to turn. Time continues to turn. Guys, I don't know if I ever want to touch a woman if it's like this. An intangible thing that took, many, that took form over many months and years. There's no repeated form and no different life. A phenomenon shared by everything. Things of the same form gather and give shape to entirely different laws. Each rare cause displays a great effect. Beautiful. They're just like fish traversing the sea. There is no will in this complete world. No persistence or defense, no symbiosis or antagonism. Anything that comes here is taken as intent. If I am a foreign substance come to exploit it, then they will respond naturally. A remarkably long time passes. The assembly of the crest draws the design of the foreign substance. But what requires caution is... It inverts. I see an illusion. A hidden past passes through, one that is not my own. I see an old memory. The morning of a parting with a certain person, someone else's memory is being, uh, being sent to a holiday villa far away from Fuyuki because of the beginning of a conflict. What requires caution is, no matter what the intent behind the reaction is, to the human consciousness, the process they are carrying out is nothing less than divine punishment. In this body that is no need for eyes or brain, I feel dizzy. Information is passing me. I return to an old memory. The morning of a parting with a certain person. Someone else's memory of seeing off someone who would never hold their hand again. The lines of the magic crest swim around me. They swirl around, searching for the bait that has appeared. There's nothing I can do. There's nothing nothing bait can do to begin with. The only way to produce a result is to observe and accept everything in this way. The transformation is gradual. Time surrounds me like a Are we becoming the fish? Time surrounds me like a spiral and passes within me. That's a big fish. and corrodes me as if swallowing nothingness. A, a fish ate me, I guess. Persons, too. Season, winter. Title, farewell. A bouquet is offered up. 
A young girl stands before a gravestone. Behind her stands a towering priest. No words are spoken. This day, too, the girl firmly bottles up her grief. Foreign substance added. A spiral blade wriggling... Oh, a spiral blade ringing the body. Like a vicious thrust, the transfer of the crest has begun. Whoa, it's red. I observe a gruesome fact. Thankfully, my ability to feel pain has been folded away. As if someone else's concern, I watched myself being locked up, bound, dismembered, disassembled, and played with. Flesh is very easily shredded. Bone is very easily whittled. All that is left is a soul that will feel pain for all eternity. It's like one arm has become the leg of an insect. It feels disgusting. This is her pain too. The pain I once heard of of carrying the magic crest. I feel respect for her. She holds in this level of discomfort, maybe many times more repulsive with a brilliant smile. It doesn't feel unpleasant at all. If I think of that, what is there to fear? I touch an even deeper place. In her memories full of nothing but partings, there was one. One meeting that filled her heart with longing. Oh, it was in the hallway. Someone was running in the school grounds. A running high jump. He ran towards a bar over and over. She was always watching, for no reason until the sun set, wondering what meaning there was to such a thing. Looking somehow betrayed, looking as though she was seeing something precious, she gazed at a scene for a very long time. That's all there is to the story. An after-school occurrence that could have happened anywhere. But to her, it was an indelible childhood memory, something akin to a revolution. Faintly, I recognized the scene too from a day very long ago. Yeah, that was him! She was always crushing on him because of his dope high jumping. Time returns to the outside. The world is returning to completion. My consciousness, solidified from being folded up so tightly, begins to disappear. Like a bubble bursting on the surface of the sea. Accepting the foreign body in my arm, I'm cut loose from the inside. Well, no dragons that time, but there was fish. My body feels heavy. Still half asleep, I open my eyes and look around aimlessly. My consciousness becomes clear. I'm lying face up on a bed with my shirt off. My left shoulder is hot and sweaty. When I try to wipe it off with my hand, it stings like a burn. Something feels off, as if I've grown an extra finger. I'm clearly different than I was before now. How much time has passed? Maybe I passed out and overslept and it's been several hours. Oh, she's embarrassed. So she is here. Good. I thought I was the boy. I think I might be like getting glared at here. Tosaka,成功したのか。もちろん成功したわよ。文字部ないぐらいバッチリ。こういう性能が得意だった綺麗だって、我が弟子ながらよくやったって陰気に褒めるぐらい完璧に。Guess that means it worked really well. Just one problem. Tosaka doesn't seem boastful or proud. Actually, she's mad. Really mad. She's sulking like she's about to blow her top. Looks like the situation has gotten kind of bad. I need to catch on why she feels this way and calm her down as quickly as possible, but an unworthy student that I am, I can't figure out why my master is angry about boy, it's pretty obvious. My upper arm throbs with pain. It's a weird sensation, like a deep cut combined with a burn. It's a fish! There's no doubt about it. A design is branded on my left shoulder. It gives off a faint blue light, not unlike Tosaka's magic crest. Tosaka, これが。ええ。私から移植した魔術刻印よ。もうただの回路になって、元の魔術の痕跡もないけどね。そうか。いや、すごいな。もっと痛むと思ったのに全然痛みがない。かすかに重いぐらいか。それも時期に慣れるわ。魔力をつなげるだけのパスだから、人体にもそう影響はないはずだし。刻印。いえ、回路の方が体に擬態していくから、半年も
All that's left is for me to activate my magic circuits and successfully create the reality marble. So but the answer is very obvious. Eh? Saw what? It couldn't be. I was totally blank during the ritual, but did I actually push Tosaka down or something? Uh oh. No way, did I really do something that would make me deserve to be called that? No, it can't be. I mean, the bed doesn't look very messed up, and if something like that had happened, I wouldn't be alive now anyway. Ah. Does that mean Tosaka was talking about that? The illusions I glimpsed. It's not unusual to see visions at the depths of someone's mind when in a sympathized state. It must be the same thing as me seeing Saber's dreams or the heroic spirit Emya's. I slap my knee in understanding. Slap. In that case, what I'm most curious about is that one. The dusky schoolyard that didn't fit in with the other dreams. <laughs> Before I can finish, a pillow smacks me in the face. It's like a slash combined with a full swing. A satisfactory blow that Saber or Fujine would admire. There's one problem. The normally fluffy pillow has had such an impact and damage that it's filled with that it's as if it's filled with water. <laughs> Big Sundere! She pursues me with the pillow. Tosaka hits me repeatedly with overhead swings of the pillow in her immodest state. I shout in surprise and received a direct hit to the face from the opening in my guard. An agonizing pillow uppercut. Pill you can! Combined with the fatigue from the transfer, I'm knocked down again. Tosaka must still be angry as she grabs the back of my neck and drags me across the floor. <sighs> I wasn't able to ask after all. She tosses me out of the room by my neck. With that mean grin of hers, Tosaka slams the door. Pushed into the hallway without my shirt, I stare blankly at the door. Yeah, guy stuff. Gotta go do guy stuff. I stand up still clutching my dizzy head. I want to say something back to Tosaka on the other side of the door, but I give up. In the end, I wasn't able to ask what the scene I saw meant to Tosaka. Muttering stupidly to myself, I go back to my room. It was probably just an excuse for Tosaka to kick me out, but it's true that there's no time. The date has already changed. There's probably less than an hour left before we head to the temple. I clo Whoa! I close my eyes and feel the magical energy pouring into me. Tosaka isn't consciously supplying me with magical energy yet, but it's already enough to fill me up. If Emya Shiro's magical energy capacity is 20 or 30, she always has 500 magical energy. I'm sure it would take years to fill up her whole capacity, but a better maximum capacity could reach a thousand. It makes me realize that her great it makes me realize her greatness again. Well, she's exhausted right now, and most magi only keep about 80% of the magical energy, so Tosaka has about 400% right 400 magical energy right now. That's still a huge amount. I use about two magical energy to use one strengthening magic, and about five magical energy to use one projection magic. 
Using that example, I could use projection magic dozens of times now when I could only do it six times before. <laughs> This has greatly increased my power. I might even be able to beat that King of Heroes with this. All that's left is... Ah, the college power nap. I'll rest and recover my mental and physical energy for the final battle at Rito Temple. Everything is set. I'll fully prepare myself since Tosaka is giving me her magic crest and opened up her heart to me. Alright, and with that date change, we will be checking out Eden next time, but you all know what time it is. It's time for me to read and react to the original uh, R-rated, not even R-rated, but M-rated scene from the uh, original version. So I'm going to go read it, and I'll get back to you guys in just a second. Okay, hello, I'm back. I actually couldn't find it on the internet, which was surprising. Uh, literally, I googled it, and all I got was ones from a uh, Hollow Atraxia, and uh, none from this. So I actually just turned on the uncensored mode on my visual novel. I went back, reloaded my save, and went there, and um, it's not as bad as the other ones. But it's still pretty rough. Um, there are some funny things with Shiro being like, oh god, I gotta get naked, huh? Real embarrassed. Uh, it's much more in tone with it than some of the ones I've read before. But there is a really cute scene of them kissing for the first time that just made me want to blushy. But otherwise, I'm going to take fish over very awkward depictions i saw the word meat in there many many times so guys next time we're continuing onwards yes this part is pretty i mean you could say eventless but for shiro this might be the best day of his life um so we will be uh back next time to go to day 16 eden and see what's up there thank you all for watching we'll see you next time ciao